Well, we talked about the Brexit Supreme Court case, but there's also, months after the Brexit vote, some social research from the Institute Natsen. It's attempted to answer the question of who voted to leave the European Union and why. And here are some of their findings from the report called Understanding the Leave Vote. 70% of Leave voters were people living in local authority social housing, compared to 47% of homeowners. When it came to education, those most likely to vote Leave were those with no formal education qualifications, while a quarter of those with a degree voted Leave. Looking at income group, 66% of people earning below £1,200 a month supported Leaving. At the other end of the scale, 38% of the top earners, those taking home more than £3,700 a month, also voted to leave. And looking at the Brexit vote by political party allegiance across the UK of people who identified with the Conservatives, 58% were leavers. Among those supporting Labour, 36% wanted to leave. And in Scotland, a perhaps surprising 36% of SNP supporters said they supported Brexit. Paul, we knew some of this information already, but this is a, a fairly extensive survey as well and some interesting findings. Yeah, there are no huge surprises. I mean, what struck me was that um, people with no formal education and people at the bottom of the income heap overwhelmingly voted for Brexit. And if you look at that in a political context, I do think that is more of a problem for the centre-left than it is for the centre-right. You know, people on the progressive side of politics have this idealised image of working class voters and what they're angry about. Now, you saw from Brexit, um, they seem to be angry about things like um, immigration and globalisation. Although um, the economy actually came out higher than immigration in this survey that, as, that's as right. the sort of main issue. That, that's right. I mean, I think that does tie into globalisation and this feeling that people are um, left behind um, by the status quo and the pace of change. And uh, I, I do wonder how the Liberal left is going to try and re-engage with voters and emotionally connect with people um, in a way that folk on the right uh, seem to manage just now. But Jenny, interesting reading actually for all politicians, giving a sense of what, what drove certain people to vote to leave. Absolutely, and there was the sort of clear demographics that were shown in this report, particularly sort of older working class, um, poorer people with less education and and also interestingly there was a kind of um, group of kind of richer Eurosceptics but had a particular sort of authoritarian anti-welfare perhaps kind of um, typically maybe right-wing um, viewpoint so you can you can divide it up into to sort of target groups to to then think about well how do we approach those um, those voters what um, you know what were they unhappy with or you know or you know, what are they choosing to vote Leave for? Um, and, you know, those who are, um, you know, obviously Leave is a good result for yeah. some people, it's a bad result for others, for, mm -hmm. for those um, whom it's a, a bad result and who are wanting to, to really reach those groups, they, they now have the sort of data to work on. Yeah. So that well, is a quick word on populist politics, because the US president-elect Donald Trump has been named Time magazine's Person of the Year for 2016. Here he is on the publication's front cover, which was shot in New York City. Paul, a surprise, do you think? He came up very highly in a Twitter poll as well yesterday. No, I mean, past winners include Hitler, Henry Kissinger, Newt Gingrich and Putin, so I think he's probably a worthy winner. It's person of the year, isn't it, Jenny? It doesn't have to be a great person, it's, it's who we've talked about who's been significant. That's, that's what they've said. It's not a sign of approval necessarily. It's kind of neutral in that sense. It's about who's been important, influential and this year, and I think it's a fair choice from, from that point of view. Jenny Paul, thank you. That's all we've time for tonight. I'm back on Monday at the usual time. Hope you can join me then. Bye-bye for now.